And we look forward to seeing you do it again, Lord. You are able, God. Let's sing this together. Sing Walking Around. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Sing waiting Waiting for change to come Knowing the bad promise to stay
I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, but somebody in here is fighting, is fighting to hang on to something, is fighting to stay afloat, and what the Lord wants you to know this morning is that He's never failed you yet. He's been faithful before, and He will be faithful currently, and what He wants us to do is just press in, in the, in the quiet, in the secret place, and seek Him, He'll show Himself faithful. Amen? He's so good, amen? Thank you guys for worshiping, worshiping with us this morning. Lord, we thank you for your sweet presence in this place this morning, God. We love you, Lord. You are so good to us. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys for worshiping with us this morning. We are so excited about what the Lord is doing here. What I want you guys to do now is find somebody you don't know. I know this might be a little difficult, but find somebody that you don't know. Tell them that you're happy to see them. Shake their hands. Give them a hug. Let them know that you're happy. What's up, A2? My name's Nathan, and here are this week's announcements. Would you like to get plugged in at A2 Church but don't know where to begin? You can join us for our begin classes on the first, second, and third Sundays of every month at 9 a.m. There, we'll explain to you how you can belong here, how you can become more like Jesus, and how you can be love in the world. You can RSVP by going to a2.church and clicking on the begin button. Next Sunday is group camp from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Whether you've led a small group before or you're thinking about doing it for the first time, we want to invite you to join us as Pastor Zach helps you discover the leader within. We'll be serving lunch too, so please RSVP on your connection card. Join us Friday, July 30th at 7 p.m. for Fifth Friday. This is a time for us to come together as a family and fast for one day with one focus in mind. Then we break that fast with a time of fellowship and worship and a family meal out back. We'll have inflatables for the kids, so make sure to bring your whole families and join us in the worship room. To stay up to date, stay connected, and stay involved, you can check us out on a2.church, download our church app, and follow us on social media. That's all the news that we have for you today, so prepare your hearts for the message. Hey, let's try this. Good morning, A2Church. You killed it. You nailed that. Yay, God. Hey, it is so good to see you on this Sunday morning. And wow, listening to you sing, I love to hear you sing God's praises. Love seeing your faces. I want to invite everybody in the room, take out your phone, take out your smartphone. If you've got a camera app, open that camera app. And on the screen is appearing a QR code. Point your camera in the direction of that code. Everybody in the room, maximum participation. It's going to take you to what we call our Connect Card. And for both guests and regulars, we ask everyone to complete this. Here's the basic reason why. We take our roles seriously here, and we love praying over the people who attend. So if all you want to do is list your name, list a first name, that's all you have to do. You'll be covered in prayer throughout the week. But if you're a guest and you would like to share more information with us, we'd love to follow up with you and to say thank you for being our guest today. And for both guests and regulars, right at the bottom, there's a place. Just leave the QR code open. Leave that Connect card open for a few moments because there's a place for you to list prayer needs and sign up for any of the stuff that you just heard about, some of the things that I will reinforce. So go ahead, do that. Thank you so much. For, for praying and believing God for miracles. He's doing some great stuff. Now is a great time for you to also to prepare to honor God with his tithe and our offering. There are ways to give on the screen. And if you've got a hard copy gift, cash or a check, 
There are boxes located as you leave. Just drop those gifts into those boxes. Or if you want to fill out one of the hard copy connection cards, just do that. Drop them into the boxes. We'll collect those this afternoon so that people can begin praying for you right away as well. Hey, I want to, I want to talk to you really quick and then introduce you to someone about two things. One really cool thing God is doing among our, our church family right now is our A2 Summer Men's Initiative. Meets every Wednesday at 6. And every week it keeps growing. Now more than 50 men are signed up and participating at some level. That's huge. Yeah, give God a big, big clap. That's amazing. And I know that some of you men, you can't be here at 6 on Wednesdays. Work conflicts with that. But I want to encourage you all to track with us with the reading. And if you sign up for that, we'll put you on the email list so you can see the reading assignments, what we're doing together. And prayerfully, God will open up an opportunity for you to connect in community. Because guys, gathering in community, we know that as iron sharpens iron, a man sharpens and strengthens his friend. And through this journey and more to come, we're going to get stronger together. So, guys, it's not too late to participate in that. I also want want to share with you, and I know we just played the announcements, but I noticed that a lot of you were enjoying community during the announcements. In other words, you just kept talking. You were enjoying seeing your friends and family. And that's fine. We're glad that you, you enjoy seeing people. But I do want to tell you something that you might have missed. People are starving for connection and relationships in 2021. I mean, we just basically came out of 16, 17 months of isolation when we were separated from one another. Where if we saw one another, it was usually behind a mask. It was often across a Zoom call. But there wasn't that face-to-face connection and community that every soul longs for. Now, we know people need that, and we know people are craving that. We hear it week in and week out. That's why we're gearing up for a fantastic, fantastic fall semester of small groups. And I want to encourage you, even if you're just on the periphery of thinking about the possibility of what it might look like to host a group, to lead a group, even if it's just a distant thought and you're not sure about what it involves, I want to invite you to join us next Sunday right after 1030 for group camp. We're going to serve you lunch. Lunch is on the house. Zach's got a teaching that he's going to share as our small groups director. He's back leading Become right now. You don't want to miss this. You'll get some tools. And I believe God will speak to you in the context of that gathering about whether or not he could use you to lead. Now, again, I'm challenging you. Come, try it out. And here's what I need you to do. I ask you to keep that QR code open. If you want to come, if you're interested in coming, go ahead, use that QR code, sign up at the bottom, just say, put me down for group camp. I'm game. I'll be there. We really believe if we have a great, great roster of groups, God's going to fill those up. People are going to connect in community. And here's the cool thing. Lives will get changed through that. Everybody, if you believe that, say amen. Hey, wasn't worship good this morning? Wow. Uh, Tyler, stand up. Yes, worship leader this morning. Tyler Self. He was leading with the crew. And I have known Tyler literally since he was a baby. So, Tyler, to see you lead worship, it's the first time you've ever led me in worship this morning. And, dude, it wrecked me. I'm serious. Thank you so much. Thank you. Give Tyler a big, big hand. Which gives me the opportunity to introduce to you his his dad, an overseer. This month, July, you're going to get to meet the overseers of A2 Church. Jeremy Self is a graduate of Lee University in Cleveland, Tennessee. Also, he has his MDiv from Dallas Theological Seminary. He is married to Ashley for 22 years. 
And I actually met Jeremy not long before I did his premarital counseling. So evidently back then what I was doing with premarital counseling worked. They're still together today. So I'm so thankful for that. Not only are they together, bring up the next two pictures I gave you. They have a beautiful family. This is the self family. We need to reformat that before the next service because they're not that short or that big. They're... <laughs> That is, that is so funny. We've, we've just shortened them and widened them a bit. No, that, that, that's not the truth about them, but it's very interesting. Bring up the next one I gave you. Maybe that one's a little bit more the way they look. How, can you imagine this? Four boys and one Haitian princess. Is that what you call her? Yes. God is so good to this family. Uh, a couple years ago, Jeremy felt a leading, a strategic leading, and involved me in praying with him about that leading to lead the senior pastorate where he had planted a church in Austin, Texas. He successfully transitioned that church into the leadership of someone else. It's known as Hope Rock Church today, but he felt a calling to reach the business community with the gospel. He is now a financial advisor for Edward Jones, and he is an overseer of this church. And I want to tell you, he takes his overseership very seriously, regularly. I will hear from him about how he is praying for us. He is proclaiming God's word over us, and he's coming right now uh, to minister the word of God. Hey, uh, Michael, can you help me with that stand right over there at the edge of that big subwoofer, please? Would you join me? We give honor to whom honor is due, so stand to your feet. Let's welcome Jeremy Selv, my friend, our overseer to the stage. Thank you so much, and it's an honor to be here with you all. Always enjoy being here. It's been a couple of years since I've been able to speak uh, on the scripture, and yet we were here, I believe, last fall to spend some time together, and I was here earlier in the year with your board, which was always a good thing. Your, your church is a dynamic church. I know, I'm not going to tell you anything you don't already know today. However, I want to reinforce that your church is a dynamic church. And I love being here because I get inspired to go after God more. I get inspired to love people more. Um, I watch online often and just catch up with you all. Um, I do want to say Spending time with your pastor is absolutely one of the highlights of my life. Uh, we got to spend five years full-time together uh, working on staff with him in West Palm Beach, Florida, and um, over the years have just stayed in constant contact with one another. And I don't know, I was thinking about two words that describe him, one word which I don't think can be uh, overemphasized, and that is the word humble. We need more humble leaders in the church. And Chris embodies humility. He walks humbly before God, before people. The second word is kindness. He's an incredibly kind person, and as a servant of Jesus Christ, I just aspire to be as kind as he is, and I just want to honor him. Would you help me honor him? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, for the opportunity to be here. Love this team, Janet. Thank you for leading us in worship as well, and it's an honor to have Tyler here with me. As you can imagine, uh, having your son uh, be alongside you in ministry is really, really cool, so it, it's awesome to be here with you. Um, let's, uh, let's jump in, and let me just pray for our time together today, because I believe God wants to do something really cool, and I guess we have an online audience as well, so welcome to you online as well, so... Uh, let's, let's pray together. Father, we are believing you to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ask or imagine. 
Father, we have a sense of expectation from the moment the first song began today. We sensed your presence here in this place. And I believe, God, that you want to do more than we can imagine. God, open our hearts and minds to receive your word today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. As I prayed about what God would have me share here today, I really sensed that God wanted to breathe life into dead places. I sensed that God wanted to remind us that he's the God of miracles. How many of us here have held on to a situation too long that we should have given to God? How many of us have had a situation where we didn't think that that situation warranted us going to God? But without God, we need him to move. When our son Blake was 17, or our 17-year-old Blake um, was six or seven years old, he went through this season of life where he had these things called night terrors. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a child have night terrors, but it's akin to demon possession. I mean, it really is crazy. It's um, this child having this absolute fit. Tyler shared a room with him, so he knows. It, it, like, he would, he would have these flip-out moments where his eyes would roll back in the back of his head. Ashley would be holding him, like consoling him, and he would be screaming for mom. And she was holding him. He had no idea. This went on for months and months and months. And what happened was it ended up causing this incredible um, insecurity in him when he was awake. And he began to act out even when he was awake. And we went through this and it was so heavy on our hearts that we simply felt like we needed a miracle. We needed God to show up in that situation. Um, One time, Ashley and I had put Blake to bed, and we were going to go on a walk in in our neighborhood, just right nearby. We weren't going far, and so we put Blake to bed, and we set out down the road, and we get about 100 yards down the road, and we hear this noise. Now, this noise sounded like a motorcycle um, and it was this little me, me, you know, as we're walking down the road and we hear this noise coming up and it's getting closer and closer behind us. And we turn around and here it is, Blake on the motorcycle coming up behind us with this look like, you're not leaving me. It, 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 it's a little funny. It was not really funny then, but it's funny now, Right. And the thing is, it was just creating this problem, and we needed God to show up in our life. A miracle, in your notes, by definition, is an extraordinary event manifesting divine intervention in human affairs. It's an extraordinary event. It's not ordinary. It's needing divine intervention. That's God moving in, in human affairs. That's you and I. That's where we come in. Uh, One professor I had at Lee used to say that miracles were raindrops of God's grace on humanity. I believe that God is still in the business of Doing miracles. And today I want to speak with you about the stuff miracles are made of from Acts chapter 3. We're continuing the series to be continued. And before we go there, I want us to go to John 14. John 14, because Jesus has just told his followers that he's going to prepare a place for them. Remember the audio adrenaline song, a big, big house with lots and lots of room. Big, big table, lots and lots of food. That's where this song, that's, that's, the song comes from this passage. So just after this, he's told them he's going to prepare a place. One of his disciples, Philip, says to Jesus, just show us the Father, Jesus. And Jesus says, hey, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And this is really similar because Jesus says, all 
I have the authority that the Father has given to me. This is really similar to post-resurrection where Jesus says, all, all authority has been given to me, now you go. Because I'm gonna be with you even to the ends of the earth. What Jesus says here, though, is pre-resurrection, and he says these words in verse 12 of chapter 14, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do, not might do, will do the works I have been doing. What's he been doing? Healing the sick, raising the dead, feeding the 5,000. What's Jesus been up to? He's been up to doing miracles, turning water into wine. There's all kinds of documentation of the miracles of Jesus. And here he says that, hey, are you a follower of Jesus? Then guess what? You're gonna do greater work than he did. You're going to do the miraculous. On the Real Faith podcast this week, which, by the way, I listen to the Real Faith podcast. How many of you listen to the Real Faith podcast? Yeah, it, what an incredible resource to you, the church, um, because it is constantly educating and helping you dig deeper into Scripture. But, but two ideas came out, stood out to me from the deep dive this past week in the, on the Real Faith podcast. Number one was the priesthood of all believers, Hey, if you are here and you are a believer, God's ordained you as a priest to serve before him. It, it, you're not just a volunteer, Mr. Cameraman. You are a priest before God. You, you're, you, if you're serving in kids' ministry, you're not just a volunteer. You're a priest before God. It, listen, when you approach this idea of a priesthood of all believers, you have to know that God wants to use you to do greater things in the kingdom. You've been equipped, empowered by the Holy Spirit. God wants to use you. The second idea that I thought stood out to me was that the apostles did signs and wonders in Acts chapter 2. Signs and wonders followed them, and I thought about this idea for A2 Church. This is a, this is a ministry of power. This is not a church that, that simply goes through the motions and sings a few songs on Sundays, and Chris gets up and declares the word of God powerless. No, they've prayed, they've sought the Lord. This is a powerful church moving with the power of God, and hey, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a part of a church that can do it without the power of God. We need the power of God to move, and that's what is happening right here in John 14. Jesus is prepping his followers for something different, something different than they've ever experienced. And my question for you is, are you here believing Jesus to do greater things? You will do the works he did, even greater things, because Jesus went to the Father. He sent the Holy Spirit. And these are the words that must be lingering in the backs of Peter and John's minds as we enter into Acts chapter 3. This new church has been birthed in eager expectation of Jesus doing greater things. He sent them on a mission, as Chris talked about a couple of weeks ago. 3,000 people had turned to Jesus in one day they were living in new community. God was doing amazing things, moving in miraculous power. And here we find ourselves in Acts chapter 3. One day, in those days when they were enjoying community, when all this powerful stuff was happening, one day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now, there was a man who was lame from birth. And he was carried to the temple gate called Beautiful where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. Silver and gold we do not have, but what we do have we give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. 
instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. This church was on the move. This church was on mission. This church is a church of miracles. God, may A2 Church be a church of miracles. May A2 Church be a church on the move, on mission, because a church on mission should be a church of miracles, and a church of miracles should be a church on mission. So this morning, we want to talk about what are the ingredients of a miracle from this passage? What are the ingredients of a miracle? Number one, the first ingredient of a miracle is to recognize the impossible situation. Recognize the impossible situation. Apart from God, this situation isn't going to get any better. I kind of wanted to use the word desperation here because I think there is a sense of desperation in hopelessness, but there's also a sense that desperation is active, like I'm desperate. But he isn't active. He's hopeless. He isn't looking for God to break into his circumstance like some of us here today may be. He's showing up in all of his broken humanity, day in, day out, hopeless. He he has accepted the status quo, and we don't really know the whole story, although we do know this man was crippled from birth. I mean, think about this. If you're born that way, it must just be. Why even try? That's never going to change, but I would just ask you the question today, isn't that the best place for God to work? Apart from God, this marriage isn't going to get any better. Apart from God, that child is not going to get any better. Apart from God, this cancer isn't going away. Apart from God, this business isn't going to make it. What is your apart from God thing? Are you at the end of your rope without hope? Because God is moving in this place today and you're in the perfect place for God to do the miraculous. Stephen Furtick is a pastor in North Carolina. Many of you have probably heard of him. Um, He was speaking back during the times of COVID when all we all had was online church and our family was tuning in, and he said these words, and it so resonated with me, I wrote them down. He said, I believe God has positioned us for a miracle. Desperation is the setup for revelation. Whenever we are familiar and we know what to do, faith can't grow. Whenever we feel fear in our lives, like every one of us feels right now, Think back, COVID, social unrest, all of the things that were going on. Whenever we feel fear in our lives, like every one of us, it's not something to be rejected. It's something to be worked through. When we feel fear, it gives us an opportunity to exercise faith. And we see that in this passage. I love how Peter and John are on mission here. Peter looks at the man Just a side note, no one had probably looked at the man in years. The man had given up. He had his head down. Silver and gold, silver and gold. Need a handout? Give me some money. He had lost touch with his humanity. And Peter identifies him because when you go out on mission, you've never locked eyes with a person that doesn't matter to God. When you go out on mission, every 
one matters. And Peter and John say, look at us. They see his humanity. And that leads us to this place where we see the second ingredient of the miracle, and it is to believe the authority of the name of Jesus. Peter and John didn't do some kind of like hokey dance, you know. They, they didn't give him complicated instructions. They simply said, in the name of Jesus Christ, walk. Do you realize how ridiculous that must have sounded to the man's ears at that moment? I can only imagine he's thinking, you want me, uh, wait, the thing that it takes a baby to do 10 to 12 months to do, to develop strength in their muscles and legs, you want me to do that thing? Walk by the authority of Jesus. And you may be sitting here today, and you may be saying, you, you really think God wants to do that in my life? You really think that God's going to do a miracle in my life? But by the power of the name of Jesus, God can do the work. The name of Jesus, come on. The name of Jesus is powerful and strong. The name of Jesus overcomes fear, overcomes doubt. The name of Jesus brings power to the powerless and hope to the hopeless. What once was ho a hopeless situation, I'm just going to sit and beg for food. I'm just going to sit and beg for money, maybe even as a pawn for someone else. How much more hopelessness could you have on top of being paralyzed from the waist down that you're now working for someone? You're a slave what once was a hopeless situation now has hope because of the authority of the name of Jesus. My mother and father-in-law uh, are from Birmingham, and they uh, raised Ashley and her siblings in church here in Birmingham, and uh, that's actually how Chris and I met ultimately because he was working on staff at that church. And when, uh, when we met, I remember them telling me stories of how they had raised their children in the Lord. And one of the, one of the stories that they would tell was when, when Ashley was young, they taught her and Wade and Lindsay, her siblings, they taught them that if you're ever in a situation you don't know what to do, simply speak the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus' name is powerful. There is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. The name of Jesus. But I wonder if sometimes life hasn't kicked us so hard that we simply forget how powerful he is. Can I encourage you this morning? Call on the name of Jesus. Speak his name over that disease. Speak his name over your marriage. Speak his name over that child. When Blake was going through that season of night terrors, uh, after months and months of this going on, we realized this is a spiritual attack. You know this, that Satan often will attack our families at the area where we're most vulnerable. So we began calling on the name of Jesus. And we were reminded of this passage in the Gospels where Jesus says there's some times where spiritual warfare happens not only in prayer, but also you need to fast. And so we began praying and fasting. We set about for a three-day fast. And at the end of that three days, Blake stopped having night terrors. And he's never had them since. The power of the name of Jesus. I feel like I came here to encourage somebody today. Can I just say what's your hopeless situation, what's your impossible problem, what is too big a problem for us is a setup for God. God speaking to Abraham after Sarah laughed. 
at the impossibility of her having a child. Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, Sarah. will have a son. Jeremiah 32, I, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your outstretched arm. Circle the word, nothing is too hard for him. Jesus, in Matthew 19, 26, looked at his disciples. He said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things, can you say all things, are possible. As Chris mentioned, our daughter is adopted from Haiti, and when we were beginning the adoption process with our agency, the founder of that agency told us, if you get her out of Haiti into the United States, it will be a miracle. So we had been going through the adoption process for about 20 months, and we had been to Haiti five times. We would go spend a week with her, then come home. We would go back. We would spend a week with her. We would come home. We're all the way expecting for our adoption process to move forward. So 20 months in, it came time for the part in the process for Ella's mom to go to the U.S. Embassy, her biological mom, to go to the U.S. Embassy and to sign over her parental rights. So she was going to come to the orphanage where my daughter lived, and the directors were going to take her to the U.S. Embassy. The day she was supposed to go to the embassy, she came to the orphanage not to go to the U.S. Embassy, but to take Ella back with her. I was at a retreat with our team in San Antonio, and the director of our adoption agency called me, and he said, Jeremy, I don't know what to tell you. This has happened, uh, Ella's mom has come, and she says she doesn't want the adoption to happen. 20 months. We've been going to Haiti five times. Spent probably $10,000 on travel at this point. So we were a little bit stunned, confused. I went back to Austin. I was down in San Antonio. I went back to Austin. I told Ashley, and we simply sat there hopeless. Hopeless. And then we started sharing this with a few faith-filled friends, and we started to speak the name of Jesus. And our prayer was that God would do what was best for Ella, not, not for us. We selfishly wanted her to be with us, but, but we wanted ultimately what God wanted best for her. And if staying in Haiti with her biological mom was best for her life, and God's purpose and plan for her, that's what we wanted. But we were praying that God would do what was more than we could do. Here's what happened. Our agency had told a local Haitian guy on the ground, his name was Billy, told Billy about this situation. And Billy would go into this slum where Ella was from. He would go into that slum and he would find Ella's mom. Her name uh, was Marie. And her mom and grandma were moving from house to house. They were homeless, shack to shack. And Billy would go and he would say, you know, how's Ella doing? We just want to check on her. And then he would come back and he would give us a report. And he would say, really, the mom and the grandma, they, they can't take care of her. They, they don't have the resources to take care of her. They don't even have a home. And so this went back and forth one week, two weeks, three weeks. She kept saying that she was going to give her back to the orphanage and that the adoption was going to go through. But after two months' time, she hadn't brought her back. We were in a place of hopelessness. It was knocking on the door. And I remember... Uh, we were singing a song at that time. We were singing this song about um, God really fighting our battles for us. And the words say this, my foes are many, they rise against me, but I will hold my ground. I'll not fear the war, I'll not fear the storm, my help is on the way. Oh my God, he will not delay, 
my refuge and strength always. I'll not fear. His promise is true. My God will come through always. And we sang those lyrics, and just like we sang this morning with, we've seen you move. You've moved the mountains. You'll do it again. And that was encouraging to us. That was faith building to us. Well, the first month came, and Marie was supposed to go have another appointment at the embassy. The second month rolls around. She's supposed to go and have an appointment at the embassy. And the embassy says, if she doesn't come to this appointment, we're going to have to terminate the adoption on our end of things. So we kept singing and kept praying and kept believing God. And then another month went by, and Billy's been communicating with Marie. Marie said she's coming to the appointment a month goes by, the morning comes for the appointment, and we're expectant for her to show up at the orphanage, and she doesn't show up. And the orphanage director called and said, we're sorry. We're going to have to terminate the adoption, and we were heartbroken. Um, how many of you know Proverbs thirteen twelve is true? Hope deferred makes the heart sick. So uh, I called Stephen Burton, uh, another one of your overseers here at A2 Church, and Stephen had been praying with us, standing with us, calling on the name of Jesus with us, and I told Stephen that the adoption was going to be terminated, and he said, man, I just get this sense that this isn't the end. Now, Stephen has a little bit of a prophetic kind of side to him, and so when he says something like that, I know it's not coming from out of the blue. He said, I get this sense this isn't the end, and and I'm sitting there kind of stunned in my hopelessness, sick in my hopelessness, and I'm thinking, maybe you didn't hear me. The adoption is over. One hour later, the director of the orphanage calls me and says, Marie is here now, and she wants to go through with the adoption She goes to the embassy, she signs over parental rights, and we have Ella home with us. What are you facing? What is your impossible? What do you need to maybe stand in the gap like Stephen did for someone else about Your impossible situation may be too hard for you, but can I tell you it's not too hard for God? And I would say that miracles, you know, miracles, they're there for a purpose. As I mentioned, a professor said, miracles are raindrops of grace on humanity, Um, And we see as this miracle unfolds, this man begins to jump and leap and praise God. And he draws attention to this new church. And so Peter and John get called into account. And we'll read, while the beggar held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished. And they came running to him in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. And when Peter saw this, he said to them, men of Israel, Why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him as you can all see. And that's the third ingredient of a miracle, and that is to look to Jesus as the author of the miracle. We can't get so caught in the miracle that we miss the one who authors the miracle. His name is Jesus, Peter says. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
There's just something about that name. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. There's just something about that name. We know at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that at the name of Jesus, he is Lord. When God does a miracle, when God moves by the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, in my life, it is not to create a spectacle. Our worship team can come. When God moves by the power of the Holy Spirit in your life and my life, it's to point people to Jesus. When God moves by the power of his spirit here and does miracles at A2 Church, it's not for our show and our pleasure. It's to point people to Jesus. All throughout the book of Acts, there would be persecution in the church. Miracles would happen. Then people would come to know Jesus by the thousands. What if God wants to use A2 Church to be a church of miracles? What if God wants to do that kind of work right here today? What God has prepared for us today is an environment. It's an environment where he used this team to usher us into his presence. He used his word to open our hearts and minds to believe God for the impossible. And I believe there's three groups of people here today. Number one, there are people here who you haven't put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And can I tell you the greatest miracle of all is that you would put your faith and trust in Jesus and that he would take you who are dead in your sin and raise you to new life in Christ. See, I, I think sometimes we downplay the miracle of salvation. Listen, Jesus didn't come to make bad people better. Jesus came to take dead people and make them alive. So if you're here today and you need to put your faith and trust in Jesus because you're dead and sick in your sin, then I want to invite you to invite Jesus Christ into your life today. Second group of people are people who you feel like that the situation that you're facing is just really too insignificant for God. You feel like that you really don't need to bring that situation to God. But can I tell you that God cares about even the most insignificant details of your life and he wants to move? The third group of people, these are the people that have given it to God before. And it's a battle, and you're trying to persevere, but you've taken it back. And you've thought, I can do this on my own. God doesn't get glory from you doing it on your own. We need to see God move in that situation so that he gets all the glory. So the band's going to sing a song in just a moment. And it's a song of hope, and I want it to wash over us here in this place. And then after they conclude this, we're going to come back, and we're going to invite those of you who need God to work in your life in those three areas that I've talked about. We're going to invite God to move corporately together. I believe God's here. He wants to do something meaningful and powerful in your life. The band's going to lead then we're going to come back for a time of ministry.
Believe stories that have proved your faithfulness. I've seen miracles my mind can comprehend. There is beauty in what I can understand. Jesus is you. Jesus is you. I've lived stories that have proved faithfulness I've seen miracles my mind can comprehend there is beauty in what I can understand Jesus is you Jesus is you I pray you will want to work in God you're the one to all the miracles I've seen, you're too good to not believe. You're the one to work in God, and you heal because you love. All the miracles we'll see, you're too good to not believe. You're too good to not believe. Too good to not believe. Too good to not believe.
God of miracles. That's our cry this morning. I believe in you. I believe. just gather around our family here that had their hands lifted and we're going to agree in prayer that God's going to do the miraculous. Would you just gather around those who lifted their hands? Father, in the name of Jesus, we trust you to be true to your name. God, you are not a man that you should lie nor the son of man that you would change your mind because you sent Jesus to die on a cross to raise people from the dead in their sin life and heal every disease, restore every broken relationship, reconcile all humanity. God, I pray for miracles to abound in this church family. God, I pray that as this church partners together, believing in the authority of the name of Jesus, God, that you would move in power that, that no one could say, oh yeah, that's coincidence, or oh yeah, a man did that, but that we would be able to say, only God did that. Father, I pray that you would move by the power of your spirit in every situation. God, I pray that you would provide breakthrough, healing. God, provide salvation, deliverance. God, I pray that you would move in power Lord, only you knows every situation that's here today. But God, I pray that you would move. We unite our faith with our brothers and sisters, and we pray by your power and your authority that it would be done in the name of Jesus. Just like Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ, walk, and the man's ankles were strengthened. I pray that the situation here would change right now in the name of Jesus. Can we just give God the glory? We thank him in advance. We thank him in advance for what he's done. God, we love you. We praise you. Amen. Amen. It's been a joy to be with you here today. Chris, thanks for having me and joy to be able to minister. Yeah, thank you. Give Jeremy a big hand. Hey, hey, God's not finished. God's not finished. God, God is not finished. Some of you, you raised your hand and you feel like a miracle is out of reach. My wife and I are believing for a miracle together. She's making a long trip to mom with one of our children who's been struggling for six years with an autoimmune disease. Is it six or five? Somewhere right in there, five or six years. You can't hear me? What? Eight. I blew it on both occasions. How many of you, how many of you believe God releases healing as God's people worship Him and praise Him? 
So, uh, Nathan, I want you to go back. I want you to sing that bridge again. I want us to sing it with expectation. Just sing this song as long as we need to. You dismiss us, sing it as long as we need to. And tech team, if you need to fade the feed back there, our biggest object right now is the presence of God and the glory of God. So if you need to fade out live stream, if we lose you, that's okay. We're still here because I know God wants to work miracles and I believe it's going to be released to our praise. Go ahead and lead us. Let's sing together. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Hey, check us out on YouTube, all of our social media channels. Follow us, subscribe. We meet on campus and online every Sunday at 9 and 1030 a.m. We also post on-demand viewing options to our YouTube channel every Sunday afternoon. Help us get the word out by sharing with a friend and on all your social platforms. If you were inspired by today's message and you want to partner with us in sharing God's love, you can do so by going to a2.church slash give. For more info about A2 and the additional content we make available, click the link in the description below or just visit us at a2.church. Thanks again for watching and worshiping.